Hi, Dom. Hello. Hi, Jovan. How are you? Let's go. <laughs> okay, um, so thank you for having me. Um, you're welcome. It's a treat. Um, so I, I never know what I'm going to read. It helps when people tell me what to read. So people have told me what to read, so I'm going to do that. Um, this first piece is is uh relatively undeveloped but it's it's my process and so just saying a little bit about that there are things that that nudge me when i write um and i can sort of see them trying to tell me something in the distance and sometimes i get to say it all and touch it and sometimes i don't you know but i write down what i got and, and what what i do have access to and so this is one of those poems for me um and so it is an undeveloped thing, but I, I, I feel like those are okay to read too sometimes. So, um, and then we'll get into stuff that is developed. Shit. Um, so yeah, this is Confessions. This is a little bit interesting. Ne me quitte pas. Il faut oublier. Tu perds oublier. Qui s'enfuit déjà, oublié le temps des mon entendu et les temps perdus à ce froid cramant, oublié ces serres qui tout est parfois encore devant quoi les cœurs devenaient ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas, ne me quitte pas. But if you stay, I'll make you a day like no day has been. Oh, we'll be again. We'll sail the sun, we'll ride on the rain, we'll talk to the trees, we'll shove the wind. But if you go, I'll understand. Leave me just enough love to fill up my head. Come on. If you go away, if you go away, please don't go away. This is how it happens. How vulnerability offers its slippery neck when you are a declaration of independence and a war cry away from anything soft or lasting forever. Here's what he does. He doesn't slink or slip into the room some midnight ghost with kind eyes. No, he marches, brave, trumpeter. Scars wide and flat on his belly, low and deep, and he knows that when you cuss at him, it's the only sonnet your mouth can host, and he admires the things you cannot say, and he is able to quiet the malaria-ridden memories that make you a liar and a thief, and he mentions you to God who is listening, and he'll never leave you, no matter how much you insist on the exit, and these things are important. They're so very important because you've been impermanent in your suffering for so long and so long has amounted to 1,000 low rumbling offenses that turn your mouth into a cauldron of slow burning secrets and you've dressed yourself in a hopelessness you can be proud of, the kind you think is noble and worthy of a hard unyielding bitch like you and he loves you. He loves you until you can do no more than make yourself a collection plate and every morning is Sunday morning in his arms and God is listening and you talk to him now more than you ever did before even when your best friend's mama was pulped in front of you 
And you knelt in the bathroom, scrubbing her wounds out in silence because her daughters did not need to know that their father could only enjoy sex with his wife if it wasn't consensual. No. It's Sunday morning every morning now, and God is listening. And you talk to God more than you did when the man who was like an uncle forgot himself, stuck three calloused fingers into your underwear and did not withdraw them again till you knew you'd never be whole. Or the three years, nine months, and 17 days of sunlessness in your stepdaddy's home who turned playgrounds into gravesides and burglarized your tiny womb over and over and over and over and over again until your labias grew barbed wire around them and you prayed your kneecaps into bleeding from the constellation of SOS signals that you flung against too many midnights. Yes, he loves you and he knows these things. And his love tells your shame to be still. And it's Sunday morning, every morning, and God is listening. He's listening. And these things are important. They're so very important because you've been dying an unnoble death since before you knew what to make of your life. And the mental nausea of throwing question marks around your self-worth leaves your spirit flabby. The mercuric march air gets in between fingers, laps around your ankles, and makes you want to write or run or watch the trickle of commitment grow itself into a cathedral of forever. And you don't even know what in the fuck that is, but God is listening. And you are learning how to be a flower, and botany has never been so frightening. But you are done with being tragic. You're done with being tragic. So you love him too. You love him for always. You hold that love in your hands. Examine its impossible geometry. You tell God that you'll try to be pink and new. Not allow your fingers to be death rigid. Though you have been Atlantic, weather whipped and spastic. A railroad of forgotten sins and bone. You're ready to give up your dead now and let go your limbs toward dancing. Swing your hips out in wide arcs of hallelujah and he will be there waiting for you, walking with you, dancing your blue note melody, being the prayer you yourself were too terrified to utter. Oh, yes.